Hello, everybody, and thank you for uh, joining us uh, in this presentation. Today, uh, I'm joined with Mr. Uh, Shinichi Kanda, our chief engineer of ETB machines, who had uh, a great contribution in preparation of uh, this presentation, and uh, Desiree Willis, uh, who is uh, with us, and she will be basically fielding the questions that we receive from the audience. Uh, throughout this presentation, you will uh, uh, see some uh, polling questions. Uh, uh, you have already seen one of them. And there will be four more polling questions. And uh, when uh, we ask you to answer those questions, there will be a moment uh, to field questions and uh, answers from either myself or Mr. Kanda. You will not be able to see Mr. Kanda's uh, um, picture, but uh, he is here with me and uh, he is uh, uh, listening to the questions and uh, he comes in when it's appropriate to answer the questions. Well, uh, this is a uh, presentation on effective design and development of ECB machines. And uh, this is poll question number one you've already seen, and you have uh, hopefully answered them all. Uh, so we will move on to the next slide, which is the outline of this presentation. Uh, in this presentation, we are going to first uh, talk about uh, EPD uh, fundamentals, and then uh, we quickly we go into specifics about uh, uh, design criteria for uh, uh, components of the EPD, like cutter head, uh, like screw conveyors, and um, how these machines actually negotiate curves and uh, different uh, methods of uh, steering the machines. And uh, one of the most important aspects of EPD operation, which is reducing the settlement of the ground uh, through uh, uh, backfilling and other methods that uh, we employ. And then at the end of the presentation, we will show you some examples of uh, EPD machines that are still working or have finished their uh, following projects successfully. Well, this is poll question number two very quickly coming up. Uh, and while we are waiting for you to answer these questions, uh, uh, I will take the first uh, question if there are any questions for today. Uh, we do have one question. Uh, what is your experience in the tunneling industry? Well, if you are asking me personally about my experiences, I've been in this industry for the last 23 years uh, designing and uh, managing uh, TDM uh, projects uh, of various types and uh, uh, hard rock TDMs, uh, soft rock TDMs, and uh, I don't know what Mr. Kanda's experience is. Uh, do you want to share that with the audience, Kanda? Um, I have experienced uh, roughly 25 years of designing EPD machine and CRD machine and uh, two um, hard rock TDM. So primarily, Mr. Kanda's experience has been in design of EPD machines, and uh, my experience is uh, basically all across the board. Okay, I think it's time for us to continue with the rest of the presentation. The first uh, section of the presentation is EPD TDM fundamentals. EPD, of course, stands for air pressure balance machines. And uh, the fundamental principle of uh, operating these machines and designing of these machines is to make sure that uh, um, the face pressure uh, or the face of the tunnel is uh, stabilized by pressurizing the face at uh, any given time. Uh, this is uh, primarily a single shield machine that operates on the single shield uh, machine uh, basis of uh, sequential advance rates, uh, meaning setting segments and uh, then thrusting off of the segments. Uh, and then uh, these machines actually provide very good uh, face supports uh, by uh, applying pressure uh, through the excavated material. And they also provide uh, good access to the front in case any intervention is needed for uh, change of cutters or any possible uh, repair work uh, to the to the cut head area. Mm -hmm. 
EPGs are mostly used when uh, various different ground conditions. Uh, for example, impermeable uh, sand and clay and gravel conditions, EPGs could be used, uh, whereas slurry machines uh, have difficulty in those grounds uh, because uh, uh, slurry that's injected uh, to the fronts will uh, migrate into the cracks and uh, fissures of the face and uh, will not be able to stabilize the ground. Whereas in EPD application, by, uh, uh, by injecting uh, suitable additives, we can create uh, a situation that the muck can uh, form a pressure plug that is required uh, for operation of the screw conveyor and the EPD uh, machine. Uh, in cohesive uh, non-permeable play, uh, EPD and slurry machines can both uh, uh, excavate uh, such grounds, but uh, slurry machine has the disadvantage of uh, uh, needing a uh, very expensive and large uh, slurry treat treatment plant uh, on the surface. And uh, mixed ground conditions, again, uh, both machines can, uh, both type of machines can uh, uh, excavate mixed ground conditions. Uh, mixed ground meaning soft ground uh, combined with some blocks or boulders. And uh, the difference between the two slurry and EPD machines in this kind of ground condition is that uh, for slurry to be able to handle rock and boulders, it requires to have a, uh, a crusher uh, in front of the slurry intake. Uh, whereas uh, by installing a ribbon screw on EPDs, we can uh, remove uh, boulders of a certain size. The basic fundamentals of EPD operation is to maintain the face pressure and to uh, prevent settlement of the surface because these uh, tunnels are mostly uh, excavated. Uh, uh, um, they're very shallow. In other words, the uh, overburden uh, above the tunnel is very low and very close to the surface and uh, that uh, requires uh, uh, close control of the face pressure. And uh, face pressure could be controlled by balancing the flow of the excavated material and advance rate of the TBM. Uh, we will see it in future slides how this, uh, this is achieved. Obviously, we have a situation in the EPDs that uh, we have a higher than atmospheric pressure in the head area and in the muck chamber. And uh, at the point of discharge of uh, discharge of muck, uh, we are basically in atmospheric pressure. So something has to take care of this difference in pressure, and that's uh, that tool is basically the school conveyor that is shown here. Let me just point to that. Uh, this is the school conveyor. This is the pressure in, pressure out. Pressure out is uh, most uh, normally atmospheric pressure. Pressure in normally is about three, three and a half bar in uh, most cases. So this single screw conveyor should be able to handle that three to three and a half bar of pressure difference. Now, how do we support the face uh, with EPDs. There are two methods of supporting the face. By adjusting the speed of the screw, you can control the pressure uh, of the, uh, on the face, or by adjusting the advance rate of the TBM. In other words, uh, the faster we advance the TBM, the higher the pressure on the face. The slower we advance the TBM, the lower the pressure on the face. And the faster we operate the screw, is the lower is lower the pressure of the face, and uh, the slower we operate the screw, uh, the higher the pressure on the face. Um, practically, it has been proven that controlling these two parameters at, uh, simultaneously is uh, is not uh, very easy to do. So most experienced. Uh, operators of such machines prefer to set the advance rate of the TBM at a desirable level and then adjust the face pressure by controlling the speed of the screw. That means that by reducing the speed of the screw, they will remove less material than is excavated, so the pressure will go up 
and by increasing the screw speed, they will remove more material from the face, and that will uh, result in decrease of the pressure on the face. That way, they can control the face pressure and uh, prevent problems that may arise as a result of fluctuation of pressure. You will see it in future slides. Well, if there is um, high water content, uh, pressurized water in the tunnel, um, to change the characteristics of rock to, to a point that the pressure plug can be formed in the screw, uh, we have to add some uh, proper additives, suitable additives. Uh, the screw actually works on the principle of uh, a pressure plug being created, and uh, that way it can actually uh, allow that uh, uh, muck or the pressure plug to travel alongside the screw and uh, be discharged at the end of the screw. So uh, to change the characteristics of the watering muck uh, so that the pressure plug could be formed, we have to add additives. Uh, so we have to inject additives to the front. Uh, the interior of the machine is, of course, uh, uh, protected from ingress of high-pressure water by a uh, series of uh, seals that I'm pointing at uh, right now, series of uh, outer and inner seals that protect the interior of the machine. This is poll question number three. and. Uh, while you're answering that, uh, these, these questions, uh, we are uh, taking uh, the next question, if there is any other question. Yes. Uh, what are some typical advance rates for EPDs? Well, Clemson, do you want to take this, or you want me to? Um, typically, the design value for the advance rate of the machines is uh, 60 millimeters per minute. But uh, some customers and uh, some clients uh, require uh, higher advance rates uh, than that. We have seen uh, requirements for advance rates as high as 200 millimeters per minute, which makes it uh, really challenging to, to design these machines. Uh, practically speaking, uh, we have uh, information from two uh, projects. One is ongoing in Mexico City, and one finished uh, the job in Sacramento. Mexico City machine is uh, at 10.2 meter diameter, and uh, the best uh, record, daily records of advance uh, is about 27 meters a day, and the best weekly record is 135 meters. And the Sacramento machine uh, at 4.2 meters diameter. Uh, has a best uh, daily advance rate of 60 meters and best weekly advance rate of uh, about 210 meters. Well, we will continue with our uh, presentation. Now we're going to talk specifically about the design features of the components of EPB to make sure that uh, the system works well uh, and uh, satisfies the requirements of the uh, uh, of the contracts. Uh, the very important component of uh, EPBs is the cutter head. It has to be designed uh, with the view of having a, a very smooth flow of muck, allow smooth flow of muck around the structure of the cutter head, and uh, obviously uh, reduce the abrasion uh, of the cutter head because uh, we don't uh, really want to uh, have intervention of. Uh, uh, unnecessary interventions or uh, any interventions if you can help it. Uh, this picture shows uh, two different types of cutter heads that are used for EPDs. The one on the left, this one is a spoke type uh, cutter head. Again, another uh, criteria for design of cutter heads is that uh, two have a smooth muck flow around the structure of the cutter head and to minimize the difference in pressure at the face and at the pressure bulkhead where the face pressure is sensed by sensors, we have to uh, maximize and increase the uh, opening ratio of the, of the cutter head. Uh, 